Hey guys, guess what? I managed to score a Wii U. And, um, that is pretty much the primary reason to why this whole video making thing has been going kinda slow. I, uh, sorry about that. Now, talk of the Wii U will happen sometime soon, but now I want to look back to the past and celebrate the Wii and its awesome library. That's right, I said awesome library. Now, I get it. Seriously, I do. I heard it a million times. It didn't get the top notch version of Call of Duty, therefore, the console has no good games. I get it. But that's clearly not true. Whenever somebody talks about the best games on the console, they only talk about the big Nintendo games, and you know what, not to discredit them because they kinda deserve it, but that's one of the main reasons why so many games flew under the radar. And it's a true shame, because you talk to any dedicated Wii fan out there, like myself, and you will find a wide arsenal of games out there that are worth your time. And I figured, you know what, I have a bunch, so let me rank them up. And just a heads up so you don't have to flood the comments, these are for the most part hidden gems. Therefore, big Nintendo games, such as Mario, Zelda, Metroid, Smash Brothers, Kirby, Donkey Kong, they will not be on this list. The same goes for the more well-known third-party games like Monster Hunter Tri, No More Heroes, and Tatsunoko vs. Capcom. I don't know, I feel like putting those games in a top Wii game list is sort of redundant. But let's stop with all the jibber-jabber and let's get the list started. Fluidity. What do you know, we're starting off with a WiiWare game. In this game, you play as water. It's not even like Dewey's Adventure where you're an abnormally adorable personified drop of water. You are literally just a pool of water, tasked with clearing evil ink throughout this magical book-like land. It's structured like a collectathon too, with a bunch of wide open worlds with missions that give you a bunch of rainbow drops, which are basically this game's stars. What really makes this game stand out is how surprisingly well done the water physics are. Moving on hills takes momentum, water slips through cracks, making jumps have some droplets splash about, it's all pretty shockingly, dare I say it, fluid. Okay, I'm sorry about that. It's one of the more expensive games on the service at 1200 points, but it's one of the best, so hey, it'll definitely last you a good while. There's a sequel coming out soon for the 3DS eShop 2 under the subname Spin Cycle, so now's the perfect time to jump on the watery bandwagon. Just, you know, try not to drown. <laughs> it's not funny. The Munchables. Now, one look at this game is easily enough to shoot people off, and it's been a pretty typical trait for this generation. What, the box art has multiple colors on it? This game must be completely terrible. Well, actually, it's pretty awesome. In the game, you control an adorable little creature gobbling up different alien vegetables around the world, and it works on what I like to call the Katamari concept. I know Katamari didn't start it, but it's the idea that you start off small and gather a bunch of stuff that makes you more powerful and allows you to gather a much bigger stuff. That's basically this game in a nutshell, and it's incredibly addicting. You eat up as many things as you can, transform into a more awesome looking creature where, seriously, this transformation looks amazing, and to grade how well you did in a level, you need to provide a chunk of special orbs that you literally poop out of yourself at the level's end. That right there is hardcore gaming at its finest. Deadly Creatures Okay, so spiders are like the worst thing ever, I think on that we can all agree. But you'd be surprised too to see a game based around playing as a tarantula and a scorpion would be awesome. You explore the spooky insect underworld and quite literally beat the crap out of anything that comes in your way. Did you know that scorpions actually have the power to do finishing moves? National Geographic be damned. It's not a really long game and it's seriously lacking some polish, but the atmosphere just makes this game for me. It's not a bug's life where every character just has a quirky personality that all live in the same colony, you're just insects doing their thing. Which happens to involve, you know, finishing moves. The developers even got a hold of Dennis Hopper and Billy Bob Thornton to play the two humans in the game. And if King Koopa and Bad Santa are in the game, you know it's worth playing. Bit Trip Complete Hey, what do you know, more WiiWare games, but this one actually hit retail. Commander Video is one of the shining stars of the WiiWare service, with six different music-based games. Bit Trip Beat, which is basically Sideways Breakout, Core, which is a four-pronged beat catcher, Void, where you simply catch black beats and avoid white ones. Runner, which is an auto-running platformer. Flux is an on-rails third-person shooter. And Fate, which is pretty much just reverse beat. The games all have a really awesome retro art style and really catchy soundtracks, and are all just a ton of fun to play and replay to get better scores. Now all six games are available on WiiWare, and Beat and Runner are on Steam, but the smart thing to do at this point is to pick up the complete collection on Wii that has all six games with some extra minigames, or the Saga collection on the 3DS to have all six bit trips on the go. And all six games are actually lucky enough to have demos on the Wii Shop channel, so you have no excuse. 
A sequel to Runner is also hitting downloadable services soon, so now's the perfect time to experience Commander Video's life flash before your eyes in the most trippy, catchy style possible. Boom Blocks There's just something that will always be really satisfying about a stack of blocks that just topple over. No matter how old you are, that will always be awesome. It's sort of like popping bubble wrap, it never gets old. The core gameplay for Boom Blocks is simply, hey, you see that bunch of blocks? Well, knock them down. With as many different balls, sticky hands, lasers, and plenty more at your disposal. And for a game concept that's so simplistic, it's amazing how much of a fun game came out of it. You also add the fact that each puzzle ranks you with how well you do, you can make your own levels that match the levels the developers made, and there are some multiplayer modes, you can be at this game for a long time. There is a sequel to this with Bash Party, which I assume pretty much makes this game obsolete, but I'm not sure since I haven't played it myself. So maybe someone in the comments will say which one is better, but any Boom Blocks is good Boom Blocks, so hey, if you can, get both! They even remade the game in 2D for smartphones. You know, actually, you know what, you may have heard of it. It's called Angry Birds. Oh, that will always infuriate me. The game also is apparently from the mind of Steven Spielberg. So the moral is, don't play this game to satisfy me. Do it for the dinosaurs. Elibits. I'll go on record in saying that, as a genre, I'm not a big fan of the first-person shooter. There are a few times like Portal that show the genre has some true potential, but we all know that's kind of a minority in this group of games. In Elibits, you take control of a kid with a gravity gun who has to capture scattered little Elibits, little creatures that are the sources of energy for the world, and it sort of works in the Katamari concept as well, as the more you collect, the more things open to you in the world, that inevitably give you more Elibits. And it's the gravity gun that makes this game really cool. You start off just being able to pick up chairs and toys, and you just progress by picking up bigger and heavier things, and it just feels awesome. This is also a fairly repetitive game, as that's all you really do, but considering you're constantly upgrading at all times, it makes this game constantly rewarding at all times. I think it's also awesome, considering this was a Wii launch game that held up really well, whereas you look at Red Steel... Ooh... Muramasa the Demon Blade now the first thing I need to say here should really go without saying, but graphical style is always better than pure graphical power. In my mind, at least. This is a game on the Wii, and it easily looks as good as the HD consoles as far as I'm concerned. But you know what, that's something that really didn't go under the radar. A lot of people recognize the game's art style, and really rightfully deserved, but it seems like nowhere near as many actually played the game. Here you traverse through Japan, slashing up all sorts of beasts, samurai, giant bosses, and critters with an insane arsenal of katanas and longswords. And really, uh, you know what, not much really changes throughout this game either. You may notice the theme of repetition on this list. But the same thing applies here. It's mostly a button masher with a few aspects of strategy, but damn is it incredibly satisfying just to destroy everything in your path. It uses the constantly upgrading mentality too, with you forging new swords every half hour or so. So you constantly feel like an upgrading badass. And if you're into Japanese mythology, this game is right up your alley, because it's just brimming with Japanese. I mean, there's an anthropomorphic fox with a huge chest and everything. What more could you want? Now that's style. De Blob. Chroma City is being taken over by the Monochromatic Inked Corporation, sucking away the color from the world, and it's up to you, as Blob, to bring back the color to the world and return freedom to the people. All to one of the catchiest jazz soundtracks in history. Essentially, and you can see where I'm going with this, that's all you really do in this game. There's that repetition again. As Blob, you can change it to seven different colors and, quite literally, paint the town red. Or blue, or yellow, or brown, whatever you want. It's mission-based too, and there are a ton of missions with the ranging variety, so while it may seem repetitive at the forefront, and it kinda is, you're still constantly doing different things to progress the game, and it's very addicting. The game also keeps track of everything you do, and rewards you for completing everything. So if you are that type of gamer that needs to fill out a checklist, this game will set your OCD into overdrive. I guess this is one of the more known games on the list, since it actually got a sequel that went multi-console, but that one went so under-noticed that it seems like people forgot the first one even exists. It doesn't help that the team actually went under after the sequel's release. That's nice. If you can get over jumping with flicking the controller, which does take a while to get used to, you could just possibly be the one to save Chroma City from black and white destruction. Good luck, soldier. Wario Land Shake It Okay, so I know I said earlier that big Nintendo games weren't going to make it on this list, but really, have you played Wario Land Shake It? 
Yeah, probably not. This game surprisingly went under the radar, and I have no idea why. In my opinion, Wario games, besides Master of Disguise and probably World, are fantastic. And this one is no different. It's a 2D platformer with a fantastic hand-drawn art style, and it maintains the Wario style of being a bit weird and different. Like, one of the main aspects of the game is taking stunned enemies or coin bags and shaking your controller like crazy to get your spoils. You can even shake the controller to do a shockwave that activates things around you, and you can clearly see why the game is called Shake It. Each level also has level-specific achievements, like avoiding enemies or collecting a certain amount of coins, as well as three hidden treasures, and a bunch of hidden levels. How did this game go so under the radar? And honestly, to me, this game is way better than New Super Mario Bros. That's right, I said it. Multiplayer mayhem that makes the game more frustrating than fun be damned. Rhythm Heaven Fever One thing I heard a lot of during the Wii's life was that all Nintendo did was cater to their main franchises and not give us anything different. Now obviously that's a flat out lie, and it's most of the people who are upset that there was no Star Fox or F-Zero on the Wii, but the point is, Rhythm Heaven is a Nintendo franchise, and Fever is the third game in that series, and by far the best. This is a collection of music minigames that really require you to have good rhythm, otherwise the game has no problem telling you that you lack them. What makes the game really good is that it takes the simplicity of working on only three different button inputs, making it easy to learn and hard to master, having a fantastic soundtrack, and having a great sense of style. Some minigames include dodging different sports balls on a date while your girl watches Gophers, a game of badminton between a dog and a cat in airplanes, and an interview with a lucha wrestler after a match. And they say Nintendo does everything for the money. <laughs> Zack and Wiki Quest for Barbarossa's Treasure Now this game is the definition of Under the Radar on the Wii. It's like Okami and Psychonauts, games that were really well known for nobody playing them. Back when the concept of Wii controls was still exciting, the team at Capcom made a point-and-click adventure game that uses a ton of motion controls, and while it may sound like a bad thing, everything is done in context, so it doesn't feel like it's forced. And not only that, the puzzles are actually pretty damn hard, man. I don't care what anyone says, this is not a kid's game, because some of the puzzles will drive you crazy. Sometimes the game does rely more on luck than actual judgment and planning, which is a problem, but the combination of legitimately challenging puzzles and still interesting motion controls makes this game awesome. I'd love for there to be a sequel, but the game was made by Capcom. No thank you. Excitebots Trick Racing Wow, this game is insane. If you take the original launch game, Excite Truck, which is kinda crazy on its own, and add the insanity of WarioWare, you get this game, and it's so damn cool. Your vehicles are all mechanical animals, and there are mini-games strung throughout the tracks you play that give you stars. There's darts where you'll grab a dart and have to aim it while you're flying mid-air, bowling where you ram into bowling pins, there's throwing a pie in a clown's face, and damn, there's just so much more. And all while you're trying to maintain first place? Oh, it's awesome. There's even a separate mode where you play poker while you race. And there's online racing where you can bet points for the races you partake in. There is no question for me. This game is the prime choice above Mario Kart Wii. You can't play the game with an analog stick, so you're only using motion controls, but I would be damned if that ruins my good hand in a poker race. It's also kind of funny that the developers, Monster Games, went on from this and the Excite Bike remake to Pilot Wings Resort. Man, talk about gaming whiplash. Red Steel 2. One of the biggest peripherals on the Wii was Motion Plus, which finally gave the Wii Mo more precise movements for gameplay. And it barely got used. Until Skyward Sword came out, this game was the killer app for the peripheral to me. Unless you for some reason think that Tiger Woods would be that killer app. Which is really funny, because you look back at the first Red Steel, which did promise Sword playing a first-person shooter, and it did a pretty black job of it to say the least. And then there's a sequel, which nailed it. This is a true first-person shooter with top-notch pointer controls and a sword that you can pull up at any time. And you know how games will typically have cutscenes that show your guy doing really cool stuff that you're not able to do in-game? Well, you can do those things. There are just awesome-looking finishers that you can pull up that truly make you feel like a badass. And when a game makes you feel like a badass, I think that's a game worth playing. It is mission-based, and plenty of the missions simply ask you to kill guys, but again, if you feel awesome while you do it, repetition is anything but a negative. Now just come on and bring us Red Steel 3. Or just implement Intense Sword playing the Zombie U2. That will suffice. Zelda 
Sin and Punishment Star Successor. Speaking of making you feel like a badass, this game is the definition of hardcore. In a nutshell, this is an arcade-style third-person shooter, so you force down a linear path and expect it to shoot a lot of things and cause a lot of explosions. And what makes it different than the norm is that your character is actually on screen at all times, so you need to multitask shooting and dodging, which can get intense. Y you know what, intense isn't even a good enough word for it. What also makes things really awesome is that you have different options on how you approach things. You can freeform shoot, lock onto enemies while risking attack power, or get up close for melee combat. So you really need to be on your toes, it's not just like, shoot the glowing thing and you win, yay. And the bosses? Epic, to put it lightly. They really are not enough words to describe how amazing this game is in such a short amount of time. But trust me, if you play this, you're in for one of the best experiences this generation had to offer. Well, you know what, except for the story. The story is actually kind of lame. Before we get to number one, I want to reiterate here for those non-believers out there that there are a ton of other Wii games that just didn't make this list, that I have either played or seen people around the internet love. A Boy in His Blob, Skycrawlers, Mad World, Ivy the Kiwi, Marble Mania, Klonoa, Fragile Dreams, Opuna, Lost in Shadow, Battalion Wars, Trauma Team, Dewey's Adventure, Sakura Wars, and there are some WiiWare games like Lost Winds, Fast Racing League, Jet Rocket, and actually many more. All it takes is a bit of research to realize that people dismissing the Wii's library simply did it because somebody else did it, and it's cool to hate on Nintendo. But with that out of the way, number one on my list for Under the Radar on the Wii. Little King Story. Oh man, you know what? This game is just magical. In this game, you take control of a kid who's become a king of the land of Alpoco, and it's your goal as king to take over the world and eliminate all the other kings in the land because there's only room for one king in the world. You know, for kids. It may seem like a cartoony kitty game at first, but what's really funny is the biggest problem for your town is unemployment. So you need to take your villagers and give them jobs, and then take them out to the fields and put them to work. But it's not like housework like Harvest Moon, though. Think of it like Pikmin, but each job type has specific skills that have pros and cons compared to the other jobs. Now, Pikmin had some strategy to it, but this game just has a ton of it. You constantly need to be on your feet, physically and strategically, if you want to survive, and combine that with a really neat art style, a great soundtrack with remixes of classical music, and a ton of depth. It's just a fantastic package all around, and there's no way I could sum it up in a short amount of time. It's cool, because I looked around at other people who have done underrated Wii games list, and whenever Little King Story gets mentioned, people just get ecstatic. It's experiences that games like this brought me, along with the many others that honestly make the Wii my favorite Nintendo console, just, you know, second to the Super Nintendo. While Nintendo is moving on to bigger and better things, I can't help but say that the end of the Wii's life is actually kinda sad. The console got a lot of flack, and I can't defend its obvious problems, but one thing that mostly stayed pure throughout the Wii's life was that it was just easy to look at games subjectively and enjoy them, not for having good physics or lighting effects or a solid achievement list, but just for being fun. And of course, I'm not saying this is Nintendo exclusive, but with the gaming industry looking harder and harder to find technical problems that really don't matter, I think it's nice that you could just really look at some of these games that may have had some flaws and simply sum them up with, yeah man, that was really fun. Now I just hope that the Wii U can provide me with many more of these experiences. Hope you enjoyed the list and thank you guys for watching. And hopefully some of you guys got your eyes on a new interesting Wii game out there. And if you did, I did my part. So thanks again, and as always, I will catch y'all next time.